so here we are on Wednesday. This is our first design hour, design on purpose. And um, let's talk about designing with courage. Um, what does what does that mean to you? Like thinking about designing, do you always design with courage or does designing with courage give you more like those words, do those words together give you more um, of a like oomph? <laughs> I don't know the word for it, but more of a passion or more of a, um, yeah, Nicole, tell me. Um, I would probably say those words probably give me more of an oomph. Um, does it does it um, challenge you to to give more, to do more, to like put all of you out there? Yeah, and I would say that it probably. Um, like there's more passion behind it then, mm -hmm. like with combining the words together, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What does, okay. So let me, let me ask this question to Beck. What does courage mean to you and how does it show up in your life? Courage to me would be um, like the action or the thought like beyond what I'm used to, mm. beyond what I may be, have ever experienced. Mm -hmm. And it could be, well, it could be something that I have experienced, but that maybe I have a negative um feeling still from past right mm -hmm. like maybe I did the thing and it didn't feel great the first time and then it takes courage it takes that um that extra to um you know give it another chance to give it a second yeah. opportunity to um be of value to me to mm -hmm. say I want to go through it even if it hurts, even if it doesn't feel the way that I think it's going to feel, but that I know that there is, you know, a purpose for doing it, that, mm -hmm. the, that it just kind of gives you that extra, um, the extra, I'll just say the extra that, yeah. uh, you, you know, I, I might want to do it again. And when it's something, and when you said the design thing, my first thought was, um, that it does take courage always for me to design because I don't think of myself as like a totally. designer or someone that's super creative in a way that I need to design things. Right. So for me, when you said that, like my first thought was I need courage every time I design something, even like putting together a post, to put together a visual with words mm. like that is designing. Mm -hmm. And it does take courage every time, every time I do that because it doesn't feel like talking feels better than like putting stuff together, like actually designing. It just doesn't feel familiar. Yeah. Look at Nicole's face. I'm just like, girl, I am like on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> oh, Lord. I love it. I love it. What if, so Beck, as you were sharing, what came to mind was, um, what if courage is anything beyond the natural, like anything beyond what we're naturally gifted in, or we're naturally comfortable in, or like, what if it's anything beyond the natural, you know, that just... I think that's a good way to think about it and to I think that's a good way to think about it because to me that is that is what it is like that would sum up what yeah. I, my thought was is that that would sum yeah. it up because 
anything beyond what's natural, I mean, that is out of the norm. Yeah. Yeah. So it takes some form of courage or um, trust. Yeah. Um, I think go hand in hand um, to, to, to think it, to do it, to be it. Um, yeah. I yeah. like that. Cool. Yeah. That's what I read a quote the other day that said, courage is a love affair with the unknown. And like, it just fits so perfectly. Like with, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's awesome. Sizzle, sizzle. Give me that courage. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I love being able to share, <clears throat> excuse me, being able to share all of our, uh, what we take from it, you know, so having courage in the design, going beyond the, the natural, you know, stepping into the unknown. Isn't that a song? I think that's a Disney song. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to end the recording with that. Um, it is 10 after, so we will see you back here at 10 2. So we're coming back to designing with courage. And um, just to reiterate that, that with courage could mean beyond the natural and being addicted to the unknown or obsessed with the unknown. Um, and, and then we, you know, sang some songs. <laughs> so, um, so let's go to right now in our lives, because we want to know on purpose with purpose is about being present today. It's about what is our purpose today? And so let's, let's dive deep. Let's go beyond to find out um, what needs to be designed with courage today. So Nicole and Beck, do you have anything that you would love support or to mastermind in, in what could be designed with courage today? Nicole, I see that face. I do. Yes. Yes. Let's go. Um, my topic for the summit yeah. that needs to be designed with courage because when you sent that message I was just like oh my god shit is getting so real and I'm not ready for it <laughs> you are exactly ready for it oh but can you hold up that tile and unmute yourself so that it shows on the screen because otherwise it won't show and then it'll just be my face Yes. Okay. No, you're oh, gonna wait. unmute yourself on the yes <laughs> on the computer. Hold on. Hold, please. Love it. Okay, switching over. Yep. No, we can't hear you yet. There you go. Okay. So yes, we were talking about that exact topic of maybe not having the familiarity of speaking and standing up and sharing our stories. And I literally just reached over and grabbed this poster that Miss Susie Simonson created for me of a picture of my actual first speaking opportunity at her I Am conference. And it says on the back, I am fearless and I am proud. So that as a reminder, because our, so our first summit, we had four seasoned speakers and one unseasoned speaker. So we just, we get to season you up. Like we get to season you up and this. Bring the seasonings, baby. Because yes. oh, do you got seasoning to do? <laughs> to, to sprinkle, sprinkle some Sparkle. Yeah, sprinkle some spice. Um, so this summit, we have four unseasoned, so not seasoned yet, and then one seasoned speaker. And so we were thinking, how on purpose is that? How on purpose do we get to have a safe space 
where we get to bring all the seasonings and we get to draw out exactly who you're meant to be and that your first speaking gig will be with an audience that loves you and that knows you already and that supports you in who you are and in what you do. Um, There's a line from your one-liner that I think may be (laughs) sugar and spice and something's nice. (laughs) Love it. Um, there's a line from your one-liner. So could you read your one-liner again for your book? Yes. Everything me. OP. I love it. Back. Yeah. If you could read that, because there's something that stuck out to me that I think could be perfect for the summit too. And then it could be a prep for your book. Okay. Um, okay. It is how tragedy created transformation in an unending will to live instead of simply survive. Yeah. Maybe it is, um, maybe it is something like how to turn tragedy into, um, what was the other T word? I'm sorry. I lost it. I'll put it, I'll put it in the chat. Okay, cool. Because what if it is how to turn tragedy into triumph with a wi- un- unwavering, here we go. Okay, so how to turn tragedy or how to transform tragedy into triumph, into thriving or something like that. How to turn tragedy, how to transform how to turn tragedy into transformation with um, the will to fully live or something because like um, live is your word. So we want that highlighted. And so, so honestly, like the fact that you're the last speaker, the fact that you are publishing a book the fact that this is two months before that book or a month and a half before that book would be published, like this is perfect marketing setup for you to be speaking yeah. at the summit and to, to have that in, yes, it is very OP, to have that as a setup, ooh, here we go. So um, how tragedy created transformation and an unending will to live instead of simply surviving. Instead of simply survive. Yes, we will, we will work with that. How tragedy created transformation and developed an unending will to live. Maybe it's like will to live. And then that's where it's like, instead of because then the book can take it instead of simply survive um yeah so how tragedy created transformation and an unending will to live I think I said a different word in there yeah you used developed in the first yes the first time you said it yes developed I like that transformation and developed an unending will to live Does that feel good? How tragedy. How to transform tragedy into the unending will to live. How to transform tragedy. I think I like how tragedy created transformation and developed an unending will to live. Because then it's then it's you, then people will know that they're gonna hear a story. Um and and then that will be able, yeah, we'll talk about it more too. We'll put a pin in it because it is, it is 10 o'clock here. Woo, woo. So thank you for that question and for that masterminding word. So we are in our second hour of design and designing with courage um, because there's, there is a difference. There's a difference between designing in our comfort zone 
and then designing with courage that is out of our natural, that is out of our, that pushes the limits that, you know, that goes to different levels. And so, um, so let's mastermind about that. Let's, let's talk about um, Nicole, if we'd like to, if you'd like to finish with yours, we definitely can. Um, or Regina or Beck, if you have anything that pops to mind for masterminding about designing with courage and if there's a difference like if you feel a difference in times where you where you are stepping outside of comfort zones um so yeah just want to go there Regina I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> yeah um yeah I don't I don't have too much to say I, I don't think I, I think um I I feel like I step outside and do a lot of things with courage but I those times might be look like they're I'm have I'm being courageous to other people but they're not to me so I don't mm. often step outside of my own comfort zone oh so yeah my own, yeah yeah Cause it does, it does seem like, so in working with you, it seems like you, you are always working to find like the next level or what will work. So for me, that seems like it is stepping out. So it, you're correct in that. Cause I would say that you step out and courage a lot, but I could see how, if you know that you can't complete on something, you know, like you can't then you wouldn't do it. Is that what you're saying? Like, you know, um, that I know, I, I think with regards to my, myself, because I think oh. about like the difference between putting yourself out there and putting yourself, like you said, design with courage yeah. is that next level for myself. Mm, I, I can push other people to do it. Yeah. Um, but that next level for myself and playing yeah. a little small. So yeah. Got it. Hmm. Is it something, yeah, is it something that, that you would think of like wanting to play bigger in or? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. It's just a matter yeah. of, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I think it's, I think we always think like, because we run, like the people that we look up to that are playing bigger those are the people we see all the time, especially yeah. now with algorithms and all that stuff. Like it really makes you feel like, oh, I can't, I can't do that because I'm yeah. not that person. But the right. people that would come, and this is what I say to my clients all the time, is the people that would come to you, they don't see that influencer. Right. Right. At all. They don't right. know who that person is. You know that person because that's your world. Right. So, um, but yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we are thankful for how you design and how you are courageous with our OPWP design. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes a difference in all of our lives because uh -huh. what you do for us affects the whole entire community. So yeah, yeah, yeah nice. that's awesome. Yes, absolutely. Um, how about Nicole? Do we want to come back to... Um, what if, what if it was transform tragedy into an unending will to live or something instead of the how to, but just transform tragedy or what are you thinking? I don't know what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Something is off. Okay. But I don't know what it is right now. Yeah. Are you, are you got, is this a, what is, may I ask what that is? Yeah. So it's for the summit um, coming up in October and what my topic will be. So are you telling your story or are you teaching other people? Both. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. Um, so it'll be set up like a, like a TEDx talk in the beginning. So like story and then, um, and then workshop level of like the how to mm. like, and really like paying attention to yourself too, 
Um, Cause this summit is more about personal than it is about business. So really drawing that out, um, drawing that out too, of how to listen to yourself. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I, so somebody recently said to me that they don't need to know the how they just need to know the what. So you don't even need to, I'm like looking at both of these in the chat. Um, yeah. You know, you could make it even simpler and say from tragedy to an un, unending will to live. Yeah. Right. Cause that draws me in and says, well, my God, an unending will to live. Like, did you almost die? What, you know, like that whole thing, mm -hmm. you don't have to do the how, the how is through yeah. transformation. The how comes yeah. after. Okay. And so you don't need to even say how to, because if they are there, they know they're going to get taught something. Yeah. Yeah. Transform tragedy into an unwilling an unending will to live. Yeah, I think I like that. What you just put in the chat. Mm. Cool. Or transform tragedy. And if you like the word transform, then you could do it first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like yeah, that. I I like because the the from tragedy to an unending will to live like that that could even be one of the like like it could be a another statement or like yeah. a beginning statement but yeah. the transform tragedy into an un, to an unending will to live then that's like the how oh we're at ten twelve okay. <laughs> we're two minutes over Woo! hey here we go okay we were, we were deep we were deep. yes we were that's awesome so there's there's words to play with during, the, <laughs> during this time okay awesome we will be back at 10 to the hour we're done. Woo -woo. so we are in our second hour of design on purpose and um we've got seven minutes to mastermind about so the topic is um, or our focus is designing. And then our theme for the month is courage. And so the question that I've been asking all morning has been, um, how can we design with courage? And so knowing that that designing with courage has um, come through, that it's, that it's outside of the natural, right? So the things that we aren't necessarily gifted in um, the courage part of it in designing um, comes in stepping outside of that. So just, is there anything that you are needing to design with courage this morning that, that we could support you in, that we could mastermind about? Um, this is the time where we receive from each other um, and we can really go to, to a level beyond what we normally would go to. So if anyone would like to share something that you could use support in designing with courage, we will open up the floor. Looking at all the faces. <laughs> you know me, I can always talk. So, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I saw Jen reach forward too. So I'm like, oh, okay, go Jen. Right. Cause I really yeah. don't have anything to say. I was just going to not have you be <laughs> alone. So, um, so same, same. Um, so I guess a part of me is like, I need more information, like design with courage. Like, what does that look, what does that even look like to be honest? Yeah. yeah. Um, so some masterminding that we did earlier was about, um, was about topics for a summit or wording. Um, and really when I think of designing with courage, it's how can you show up more? Um, a lot of the people in our community are showing up, you know, and are showing up consistently or, um, it, we work really hard on who we are. And so, but how can it be more, or is there something that you've thought of, um, that you haven't taken action on 
that we could encourage you to to take action on or to um, to step out in in courage. Yeah, Regina has something. Okay, yes, Regina has something. So, um, so thank you for asking that question, Jen, because the answer kind of made me realize, like, okay, well, so first of all, take even just having the courage to talk about it when it's still like out there. Yes. Um, so I have I have like a beta test group that I am, would like to intend to start in November. Yeah. Um, and I guess like everybody calls it a beta. Like, I, has anybody done this before? What was your experience? What did you call it? Like, how did you approach people about it? I would love to hear feedback from others who have. Yeah, I've done I've done many beta and I've always called it beta um, just because I think that it's understood. Um, we are working with a dream client who's calling it her pilot program um, because it's the first of it. And so there are other words that you can use. If beta doesn't sit well with you, there are many other words that you can use. Um, really what, what I've used beta as is it's something that I have a new, a new idea about. <coughs> excuse me, so I'm passionate about it. And I know that it's where I want to go. Um, and I need people who believe in me. And they can say, yes, I believe in you. I need this. So I will be one of your firsts. And so it's mutually beneficial, that it's beneficial for me to get the um, to get the results. It's benefit beneficial for me to test it out and to see if it's something that I actually do love and do want to do. And so what I do, I just do a standard because if I don't do standard, then my mind is all over the place. And then I think, what did I charge who? When did I charge them? What was it? So I have a structure around beta. And I typically, if it's an individual program, I typically do three to five people. And so three to five people, I offer them a savings. It is not a discount and it's not starting lower. So you start with the amount that you are going to charge. Okay. So you start with that value because your value is there. You just need people to experience it. And so the first people to experience it, then they know your value and they're like, yeah, I'm getting a deal. And then what it can do is it can, it can, it can, um, encourage the, the space, like the beta testing to fill up sooner. And so, so you can say, okay, I've got three spots at this price. And then with my beta testers, I always grandfather them in. Always, 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 because then that brings like, then like Becky was a client of mine for three and a half years because the price was always grandfathered in and there was more work that needed to be done. Right. So it's only offered to the beta people. And then the second you reach the amount of people that are your beta group, you hop up to your regular price. So you're not wondering about, am I charging too low or I need to charge lower to get people involved? No, you know your price and then you do 50% or whatever percent savings you want to do. And then right when you hit that, you have the boundaries. So you're honoring yourself to move into that higher pricing. And it's worked really well. Like for me, betas have always, always, always filled up and worked really well. And then I'm confident in moving forward. So that is, I just took that whole time. Anybody else have things? It's 11. <laughs> it's right at 11. But if there's any other advice or thoughts, if you want to write it in the chat too, because then we can come back to that and mastermind um, on the next Yes. So, um, so we are at the top of the hour. So I'm going to stop the pause, stop the pause. I'm going to pause the recording. So we are in the last, the first part of the last hour of design with courage and um, wrapping up or talking more about beta. 
Um, so as I was using the whole time of the last time of the mastermind, are there any other questions that came up or thoughts of beta programs that any of you have done um, that you'd like to share? I shared it in the comments, but um, um, with uh, starting our our 12 month program, we really had no idea what the time investment was going to be or, um, you know, anything like that. So mm -hmm. we just started at a price and, um, and then as the year went on, we had, um, where they had to commit for at least three months and then we would bring people in again. Um, and they could stay for the full 12 months, but they, um, Anyway, so every three months we raise the price and mm -hmm. then our new class starts in October and now we have more of an idea of what um, of what it's worth. Plus, we have, you know, testimonials and transformation. Yeah. And so that adds to the value of it as well. And so now we have a new pricing that is extremely higher than we started. Um, yeah. because we have like a clearer understanding of what our program is. So, yeah. um, so we didn't do it the way Sue's just described, um, because we really had no idea where to start from. Right. Um, so, um, that probably would have been nice because the people we have grandfathering in, especially the people who started last October are getting a really good <laughs> deal, mm, a yeah. really good deal mm, yeah. compared. So, um, so yeah, so we have people paying all different kinds of amounts and, um, and that can get confusing, but, um, mm. it's all scheduled. So it's not yeah. like I'm invoicing people. It just automatically comes out of their bank account. So it, yeah. I don't even have to think about that. And I would say too, something that I forgot when, and you reminded me of it, Foxy, is that the biggest thing that you want with beta or pilot or, um, you know, starting a new program is that you get three things in return. So you're giving the savings um, but you also get to receive. And so the three things that I say is, um, is that you receive feedback, honest, full on feedback is a gift. You receive feedback because you're unable to grow if you don't know what needs growth. Right. Um, so feedback and then raving testimonials, like amazing testimonials. So anything that is good, that it is so good. Right. So um, you ask for that and then you ask for grace because you're starting something new. So you don't have the answers to all of it. You will just, you will find out the answers. You'll figure out the answers. Um, but those things, so Foxy, I love that you got testimonials and that you're collecting all the things so that now you can say, because you've always been worth it. That's the thing is that we always are worth what we're charging. Um, and then you can bump up from there. So and it is 10 after. So I hope, thank you, Foxy, for sharing that, that there are, there are different ways to go about it. Um, and really any way that you do it, as long as you're moving forward, you're good. So awesome. I'm going to create a breakout room and we'll see you all at 10 to. Suze, you're still recording. Thank you. <laughs> so we are in our last, <coughs> excuse me, I got a little tickle. Um, we're in our last mastermind of the design on purpose with courage. So um, what can we have courage in in designing? So in the last, in the last few minutes, um, how can we support each other uh, in this? I have something. Oh, Foxy, you have something. No? Okay. 
I have something that um, I have been meaning to post for uh, since Thursday or Friday. I think it was Friday. Um, I've been meaning to post a post about my brother and um, having the courage to ask for funding. Um, so he has put this post together and he has not posted it yet, but he had me read through it and he wants to put pictures with it and all of that because um, they need to travel so much for the cancer treatments and the trials and all of that. And like to keep him alive, they need to tra tra travel to different states and um, spend nights in hotels and all of this stuff. And um, we've done funding experiences for him prior to that. And so now he's like, okay, can you just spread the word to your neighbor or your aunts or your friends or your, you know, people that haven't given yet, um, but that would be willing, you know, to give. And so I've wanted to just post his post because he hasn't posted it. So to have the courage for both of us to do it. Um, and something is holding me back in that too. And so um, that would be, I've designed a lot of things for it. Um, it's, it's such a touchy, like it's amazing to receive prayers and thoughts and great vibes and all of that. Um, and then there is the need of money and like $2 helps, $5 helps, whatever, you know, like just getting it out to a lot of people. And so just asking for the share. So that's really like having the courage to ask for the share is what I'm struggling with. Yeah. So my first question is, what do you think is at the core of the resistance? Um, I don't want to put anything out there publicly that he doesn't want. And so I'm feeling like I'm waiting for him, but I think the resistance for him is pride, but not in a prideful way, in a humble way, you know, that like everybody's struggling with something. And so to ask for money, you know, like it's a, yeah. Yeah. Um, ideas are yeah. um that you can write up what you want to say and have him approve it mm. yes that's and awesome and um also sharing with him that he is um he is giving people the opportunity to support him if yeah. they cannot support him with money they don't yeah. have to mm. yes so um so yeah that I think asking for money is always a, well, I shouldn't say always, but is, is something that can definitely, um, be a challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, seeing it as, um, being willing to receive, yeah. you know, we talk about that, um, yeah. being willing to receive, giving others the opportunity to give. Right. And, um, the opportunity to fill the fields of giving. Yeah. And uh, so much when someone is sick, people feel powerless right. to, um, to do anything. Right. And this is a way that people can feel like they're physically doing something to help the right. situation other than, you know, saying a prayer or sending good vibes. Yeah. Um, and so um, maybe those kinds of um, things would support him in posting his post, though um, there are ways that you can still mo move forward in supporting him in this way um, without him posting his post. Yes. Thank you for that, because I have needed courage in that to be able to say, you know, because I mean, I'm not no one is shy about him having cancer or, you know, anything like that. And so the fact that now he actually showed me that he has a post to post and it's been since I was in DC, like that's how long he's wanted to post this post. 
And so there's been different things that have held him back. And so um, I could even talk to him about, about this conversation and that we are having conversations about like this month's focus is courage. And so being able to step into that courage. I think that I'm going to, I'm going to talk to him today about it. So thank you for that support in there. And then Nicole also too, like it's something that you're familiar with on your journey. Absolutely. That there, there are things that, that we can continuously receive support in and how beautiful that we get to offer that to each other in different ways, you know, and that we get to be needed. Yeah. Becky, tell us your thoughts. I was just gonna say, I don't actually know the details of what was happening because we were discussing, but what I know is that it's a, I think that when we need more courage to do those posts and, and say our experiences, that that's because it is a soul conversation. It's deep, it's mm -hmm. meaningful, and there is opportunity for other people to not understand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So vulnerability for sure. Yeah. And is there un, not understanding our weight to carry or do we just put it out there and then that's their weight to carry? Mm -hmm. So with that, I am going to stop recording. <laughs>